As far as I know, this was the first major news that circulated about the merger, and this was going everywhere online. In just a second, I'm gonna get into my thoughts on this merger and whether or not it was actually an acquisition, and if it was an acquisition, who acquired who? We're also gonna talk about the timing because hello, in Q4, when you're, you're wanting to project stability to merchants, you announce a merger? That's insane. My name's Michael, I'm the CEO of ShineOn, a leading print-on-demand company, and I consider Printful and Printify our two primary competitors. Before becoming the CEO of ShineOn, I had 15 years in the corporate world, and I was part of three huge mergers. Plus, I was on a team that oversaw like 13 mini mergers. So I know something of print on demand and I know a little bit about mergers. In this video, we're gonna explore what this merger means for print on demand as an industry and what it means specifically for you as a creator. Now, most of my thoughts in this video are pure speculation because we simply don't have a lot of detail. But with the detail we do have, I think we can make some pretty good guesses about how all of this is gonna unfold. Everything started on Tuesday morning when TechCrunch released this article announcing the merger between the two companies. Right off the bat, the first thing I noticed about this TechCrunch article is it is super snarky. Whoever wrote this does not seem to be a fan of this merger. In the opening line, it says two veteran European companies in the world of print on demand are merging and you may not have even realized they were separate companies to begin with. The article goes on to talk about possible headcount reductions, how the two brands are gonna coexist in the future, and then another zinger, the consolidation can also be a strategy to drive up prices by reducing customer choice. And then in the closing line, it says, it's full steam ahead for Printfulify, or whatever the combined entity will be called. As far as I know, this was the first major news that circulated about the merger, and this was going everywhere online. In just a second, I'm gonna get into my thoughts on this merger and whether or not it was actually an acquisition, and if it was an acquisition, who acquired who? We're also gonna talk about the timing because hello, in Q4, when you're, you're wanting to project stability to merchants, you announce a merger? That's insane. Also on election day, what is going on here? I also wanna talk about what this means for the creator because I think that's the most important piece here. So real quick, let's get a lay of the land of the two companies. I'm on Printful's website right now. Here's some quick stats. They have over 368 products. They've shipped 92 million orders since 2013, and they fulfill roughly a million items every month. The important takeaway though, in my opinion, is that if you look at Printful strategy, it's fundamentally different than Printify. Printful is vertically integrated and they have manufacturing facilities all throughout the globe. If you look at this image, it looks like they have manufacturing facilities in the Midwest, the West Coast, a couple on the East Coast, a handful over here in Europe, one in South America, and then you have one that serves Asia and then two of them that serve Australia. So Printful actually has a physical footprint in these geographic locations where they produce and fulfill the orders that come through their app. If you look at Printful on LinkedIn, they have over a thousand employees most of whom are in Latvia. Many of you don't know, but Printful has a headquarters in Latvia. That will be important in just a moment. Now let's pop over to Printify. Printify has 10 million merchants, 100 printing locations. They've shipped over 60 million orders and they have over 900 products in their catalog. But instead of being vertically integrated the way Printful is, Printify uses print providers. Printify at the end of the day is just a software that connects creators to suppliers, so they don't have production facilities anywhere. Here's a high level view of what their model looks like. So as a creator, you can make a product, choose your print supplier, and then your order gets sent to that print supplier for fulfillment, and they're all over the world. Now jumping over to LinkedIn, Printify has over 700 employees, again, most of whom live in Latvia. Printify also has a headquarters in Latvia. So now the question is, who acquired who? Well, according to another press release I found, Printify, who's been around since 2015, just became profitable in 2023. So this entire time they've been burning cash trying to gain market share. It's total speculation on my part, but I actually don't think Printify has been profitable for very long. I think the margins are really tight and I think they are struggling. Plus, everybody knows how the economy is and it's really hard to get capital in this market. I think Printify was struggling to raise to sustain their growth. So my guess is that this was actually an acquisition and it's being called a merger to keep things calm in the two companies. I think Printful probably acquired Printify and they got it undervalued. Now let's move on to the next question. Why on earth would you announce this in the middle of Q4 and then on election day? 
no less. Q4 is a time when you want to be projecting stability to your creators. Oftentimes your creators are right in the middle of scaling campaigns for their stores for all this Christmas spending that happens in Q4. And you don't want them to feel like their providers aren't going to be a reliable place to send orders to. That seems really, really odd to me. Again, it's total speculation, but I have two theories here. One, this could have been leaked. Perhaps this TechCrunch article was a leak. Maybe they weren't prepared for this to be breaking news on Tuesday. Shortly after the TechCrunch article, there was a post in Printify and Printful's Facebook groups. This is a pretty short post. The details in it are sparse. Again, it just gives me this feeling they were reacting to the news. They didn't plan any of this. Now, I took a good number of the comments in this Facebook post and I dumped them into ChatGPT to have it do a sentiment analysis. And based on that analysis, something like 62% of these comments were apprehensive, cautious, or even negative. So you can see that this kind of shocked the creator community that uses Printify and Printful. So that's my first theory, that perhaps this news was leaked and they were reacting and they weren't prepared for it. Again, total speculation. Theory number two is that this was strategic and they announced it on election day for a reason. They wanted the news to be overshadowed. They did not want this to be in the limelight. Perhaps they knew that there would be a negative perception around it. Perhaps they had to announce it before some kind of deadline. Maybe they have some idea about who they think was going to be elected and they were trying to get the news of the merger done and out of the way prior to the election results to cement the deal, so to speak. Maybe Printify was freaked out because they don't have a headquarters in the United States. They're in Latvia and they knew that Trump was super pro-American and maybe they thought there'd be some kind of penalty on them for being a foreign company. I have no idea. I'm totally, totally speculating here. But those are my two theories. It's theory one, they're reacting to a leak. Theory number two is that they planned it on election day for some other strategic reason we're, we're struggling to identify. Now, what does all of this mean for you, the creator? Unfortunately, I don't think it's good. The most obvious thing is that there's gonna be far less competition in the print on demand space now. You have the number one and the number two companies combining. It's like Coke and Pepsi joining forces. They will essentially have a monopoly on the market now. The next biggest competitors are probably Gelato, Guten, and Shine On. I mean, I think that's it. And with less competition in the market, there's less price pressure, which means this new company, Printfulify or whatever they call themselves, can increase prices. I'm also just a tad concerned because Printify recently launched Printify Choice. Now you currently have to opt out of it, but at least you have the choice of opting out. But with Printify Choice, you're trusting Printify to route your order to the supplier that makes sense. Now, typically they try to send it to a supplier that's closer to the end customer so they have a better experience, which is great. But what happens when these two companies complete this merger and Printful wants order flow from Printify? I think we're probably looking at a situation where Printify removes your choice as a creator and automatically sends all of your orders through Printful manufacturing facilities. And we all know Printful has premium prices in this space. And I don't see any other path than for that price to be passed on to you, the creator. Next, I think there's gonna be absolute chaos in the two companies. Again, it's pure speculation, but I think they're calling it a merger to keep things calm in the two companies. However, anytime you do a merger or an acquisition, you're looking for operational efficiencies. It is inevitable that they're going to look at their employee base and want to reduce some of that overhead. So I think definitely in Q1, we're gonna have a bunch of people inside of Printful and Printify starting to get laid off an attempt for them to optimize their financial positions as they move into 2025. Now, what happens after layoffs? Well, morale starts to decline in the company cultures. As morale declines, quality decreases, innovation decreases. Printify sometimes has a little bit of a fun, creative energy in their communities. I think that will go away or at least feel some pressure. And finally, and here's the worst part, I think quality in Printful manufacturing facilities will start to take a hit. Lastly, and I'm hesitant to say this part out loud, but I worry for all of Printify's print providers. Many of these print providers have built their entire businesses around the order flow that they get 
from Printify. What happens when Printify stops sending all of these print providers? We're talking hundreds of them. What happens when they stop sending them the same order flow and all of that starts to route back through Printful? Many of these print providers, they're not marketing companies. They haven't had to do any of this yet. For, since 2015, a whole ecosystem has been built up around Printify's technology. And I think a lot of them are gonna start to go out of business. That's gonna result in even less competition in the market. And Printful and Printify will really be able to lean into the new monopoly power that they've gained. Now, I know I'm painting a fairly grim picture. Of course, this could all work out for the best when two giant companies come together and they altruistically change everything about their business and they sacrifice their profits for the good of their creators. We've seen that a lot over the years, haven't we? Now, finally, to wrap this up, I think the question on the table is what can you do as a creator? Now, look, I'm the CEO of Shine On and my answer here is gonna be biased, but I think you need to start exploring other print-on-demand companies and start supporting the little guys. I can tell you that at Shine On, everything we do has a merchant first approach. We don't launch new innovations in our software unless merchants ask for those new innovations. When merchants told us that they needed more competitive pricing, we found a way to be more efficient in our operations and we reduced our prices in some cases by 30, 35, and even 40% across the board. At Shine On, we are vertically integrated. We have a production facility in Florida. We do two quality checks on every item before it goes out the door. And we really pride ourselves in the unique, fun, and engaging community that we have created for our merchants. We're still a small business. We can't afford a Super Bowl commercial. We only survive if we're better than our competition. And the great thing about us still being small is we can be agile, we can be nimble, and we can listen and respond to the desires of our merchants. Now, Shine On's not the only game in town. There are other small print-on-demand companies that could use your business. So I'd encourage everybody, go to the Shopify app store, type in print-on-demand, and find a print for Printify competitor that you can start sending some of your orders. Test these other companies. See who is the best fit for you and move some of your business over there. All right, 2025 is gonna be a wild, wild ride in the print-on-demand space. If you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, watch more of my videos. Michael, out.